Good morning. It's good to see you all here on what is a lovely day, right? Especially if you're from Scotland. This is kind of normal weather, correct? Or England. So glad you're here with us on this rather chilly and uh, rainy day. And can you, if you can believe it, we're nearing the end of October already. So it's good for, your, for me to be here with you. I'm glad that you're here and made it safely in kind of the dreary weather. If you're joining us online, we're glad that you're joining us. I hope you can uh, make it every Sunday with us at 1030 as we continue our online worship services. Or if you'd like to join us at either 830 or 1030 in person, please let us know if you can, if you plan on coming as we have reservations. We are still trying to take seriously our COVID-19 outbreak in the area. As we know, we've had some uptick in cases in Gibson County and have had a number of people who have suffered from that. And all of us know some people who have suffered from that. So uh, please do all that you can to keep yourself safe as we'll try to do that too as you join us in person. This morning we will be celebrating Holy Communion. I will consecrate the elements and you'll notice on the slides as we go through our songs there will be scriptures that are normally used in our normal communion service. I will also remind you that everyone is invited to partake of communion uh, here with us. You do not have to be a member of this congregation or a member of United Methodist Church. We believe it to be a, convert, a converting ordinance or sacrament. So everyone is welcome at the Lord's table when we commune together. If you're joining us online and you would like to have communion elements uh, dropped off at your house, if you'd like to come pick up some here at church, we'll have those for you as well. So you're welcome to those. We will consecrate our elements as a part of our morning prayer. We will then have our, our service through word and sermon. And then after that, we'll celebrate together in a very Baptist-like communion style where we'll celebrate together um, after the fact in our final song. So we'll just uh, uh, we'll be like our neighbors who love us and we love them as well. This morning, I'm going to invite you, as you're able, to stand with me as we remember the Apostles' Creed, which is our historic affirmation of faith, a statement of the truths, the basic truths of what we believe universally as fellow believers. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you pray with me? Almighty and everlasting Father, we thank you for the glory of this day, for the blessing of rain, for the blessing of renewal that we find when we gather together in your presence through the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for it as we celebrate that mercy today. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless us with your Holy Presence, through your Holy Spirit, that that Holy Spirit may indeed descend upon us and well up within us, that we may commune with you eternally and together may know that we are brothers and sisters through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask this and pray this in Christ's mighty and holy name. Amen. You may be seated. As we continue to worship this morning, our song that we'll have in our song set is Your Great Name and a new one called Power.
Some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, oh, but I, I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord. Some may trust in riches, some may trust in all they own. But I, I will trust in the name of the Lord. There is one who work in power, Holy Spirit in power, great redeeming power, power in the name, resurrection power, bondage breaking power, power in the name of Jesus.
above. You are, you are where my help comes from. Well, as I'm privileged to say, at almost every turning in worship, thank you so much for the praise team not setting the bar too high for me, right? They do a great job, and I appreciate their dedication, as I've said many times, and uh, continue to I truly mean it. Thank you so much for helping us in both services. It's a, it's a blessing. Let's give them a round of applause again, if you don't mind. This morning, I do want to say a word of appreciation as we turn our attention to our morning prayer and time of consecration of the elements. To uh, We had a great group of people come out and help us clean the church up a little bit, the outside, trimming shrubs and um, cutting shrubs, all kinds of stuff. We had a good group of people, so I appreciate all those who volunteered yesterday to spruce us up for the fall and winter season, and it's upon us, and a good time, if you don't know this, a good time to cut your shrubs if you'd like to do that, and cut trees, so... Uh, we've got a good crew here, and I might hire them out if you'd like for them to come to your house, cut trees for you. Any of the volunteers will do that? I don't see any hands raised, but thank you to everybody who was able to come out yesterday and be a part of that cleanup day here, here at the church. This morning, as you'll see uh, behind me, our weekly prayer list, many of those um, have been often on our, on our prayer concerns, and I can ask that you continue to pray for them. I think Jake is doing well, so he might get to come off the list pretty soon. As he, uh, I saw him actually Friday out at the coffee shop in Humboldt and said that he was doing well. So uh, he is recovering and has almost fully recovered from having a, a broken jaw, and we're glad about that. I want to continue to remember those who are often on our prayer list here. Uh, Miss Rose Barnes was with us in the early service. She does have uh, an injured arm, as we had talked about, but she was able to come to church this morning, so we're grateful for that. Also, we want to remember uh, the family of Miss Lila Allen. Miss um, uh, Lila was laid to rest this week. Emily and Melissa, uh, that's what, well, it would be Melissa's grandmother, Melissa Barnes. And uh, we're, we're grateful that uh, we were able to celebrate the life with her. I went up for the funeral and had a, had a lovely eulogy for her and apparently was a very sweet lady. So remember Melissa and Emily in our prayers, normally here at the first service. Also, the three supporter family, um, Amy, who live, helps lead us in worship. It was her stepmother who passed away and was buried a week ago uh, today. So we remember the Porter family in our prayers. And also Mike Blanken, his wife Shannon, used to be administrative assistant here. He has come home this week. I believe he did get to come home this week um, after being uh, in therapy for a long, long time after having a stroke uh, this summer. I want to continue to remember him as he makes his road to recovery and, and his entire family. Also, I had a couple of names brought to me this, this morning by Miss Vicki uh, Williford. Well, I'd like to remember Sharon Laus, is that right? I got it right, close, whose father passed away um, Thursday. I want to remember Miss Sharon in our prayers. And Jared Okoth, who's Minister of Light of Nations, uh, church in Jackson, passed out last Sunday during service and is in rehab now. So remember Reverend Jared. And also Vicki's sister Mona is recovering from knee surgery. So she asked that we remember those persons in our prayers. And I do encourage you to... Um, to pray for the church and one another. I know it's much needed in this, this season of our life as it is in every season. I promised the first service, and so Allison's here now that she can hold me to the fire this coming week. We're going to start producing a prayer list to be at your reserve places so all of you can join us in remembering those who are on our weekly prayer list. Uh, and Allison, I'll do that, I promise, okay? She's like, yeah, sure, sure. Um, I will. I'll try to remember to do that. I want to add to her responsibilities. She, she does a lot for us here as part of our congregation. Very pleased with how she always helps. Also, I want to say a word of appreciation. Uh, just to, uh, As we do anything in this congregation, it takes a couple of extra steps now in COVID. So I just want to say a word of appreciation again to Robert and Brett, helping us out with the videos in the back. And our children's minister, Haley, as she's always willing to pitch in and help us get things done as we continue to transition into season. So things are getting a little bit more back to normal. I do want to mention this. Come January, barring any strange things happening in January, uh, we hope to have Wednesday evening services back for our, our children and young people. And I will also begin to develop a, a, a every other week lesson for adults we'll have on Wednesday nights. We'll have those available, at least my portion, available digitally. 
online and we will do that in person as well for those who want to join us so we're trying to get back and we just need to pray for our community and our country that our uh, we continue to go the right direction with COVID-19 this winter now if you'll compose your hearts to uh, our time of prayer together I'll consecrate the elements and then we'll go into our time of morning prayer to be followed by the Lord's Prayer prayed in unison Holy Father, as we remember your great and glorious gifts, as we remember the truth that your Son Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, became human for us, we celebrate the fact, Lord, that as he bore our flesh perfectly, Lord, in that same body, he was broken so that we who know sin may know his sinlessness. And he shed his perfect blood for us, that by his wounds we might be healed. And Father, now as we bow to you in worship, we ask, Lord, that you would so consecrate and bless, Lord, these gifts to us, that indeed they would be for us the body and blood of your son Jesus, that we receiving them, that we may be partakers of the divine nature through him. Lord, we ask and we pray that indeed we may know the power of your divine life and ours, that you may heal us, that you might restore us, that you might reorder our sentiments in our life, that we should live in right perspective with you and the world around us, that we may love you, Lord, as you love us, and that we may love our neighbors as ourselves. And Father God, as we bow before you, we know indeed that your presence and your majesty are great. And we ask for the glory of your presence to anoint and consecrate us all. For those who are battling against addiction and disease, we pray your healing. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray for those in our communities and our families who have perhaps never understood the goodness and mercy of your son Jesus. And Father, we pray that we may so share our stories that our life, our jar of clay, may hold the glory and truth of your son Jesus that others may see how much they are loved by you. And Father, we, we pray for all those, Lord, in hospitals and nursing homes. We pray for all those stricken with COVID-19. We pray for doctors and nurses who give care to us in our times of illness. We pray for our paramedics, our EMTs, our firefighters, our police officers, we pray your protection and safety and anointing would be upon them. And Father, we pray your richest blessings upon those who serve in the armed forces. That indeed, Lord, that you would bless them and consecrate them. Heal them of their woundedness as they, many have suffered the horrors of war. We pray for those, Lord, who now train to serve our interest abroad. We pray indeed. Lord, that you would bless them with your richest blessing. And Father, we, we do ask your richest blessings uh, uh, to be upon our president, upon President Trump, the leaders of Congress, the houses of Congress, Lord God. We, we pray, Lord, indeed, that you would bless us in this season of debate and distraction, in this election cycle, Lord God, that Despite differences of opinion, we may all be one as you are one, as your son Jesus prayed for us. And Father, we, we pray for your peace to reside in this land. We pray for those who have been wounded, that they may be made whole. 
We pray for all of us that we might truly, Lord, know your glory and presence in every moment of our life. We especially remember our young people as they, no doubt, Lord, they feel threatened and intimidated by this season of strife. We pray that as they see fightings within and without, that they may love as you have loved. Bless all of our students, all of our children. Bless all of our college students. Lord, bless all of our teachers and administrators. Bless them with your wisdom, peace, and strength. And Father, now bless us in every church that gathers in your name. No matter denomination, Lord, we pray that every person that calls upon your, your name this day may know your love, may experience your presence, and be a part of your healing for this world. Oh, Father, we ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes again from 2 Kings chapter 5. If you were here with us last week or you joined us online last week, but we read a portion of this passage of scripture last week. And now it really will end, it will end not in verse 20, but in verse 19, if my recollection uh, corrects my PowerPoint slides. So 2 Kings chapter 5, beginning in verse 9. This is the story of Naaman, a warrior who has come to Israel for healing for his leprosy. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me, he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abna and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he entered, then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is a God in all the earth. There is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a present from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will accept nothing. He urged him to accept, but he refused. Then Naaman said, if, if not, please let two mule loads of earth be given to your servant. For your servant will no longer offer burnt offerings or sacrifice to any God except the Lord. But may the Lord pardon your servant on one count. When my master goes into the house of Ryman to worship there, leaning on my arm, and I bow down to the, in the house of Ryman, when I do bow down in the house of Ryman, may the Lord pardon your servant on this one count. He said to him, go in peace. Thus endeth the reading, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come as the light and reveal. Come as the fire and burn. Come as the wind and cleanse. Convict, convert, consecrate until we are wholly thine. Amen. 
This morning I want us to think, continue to think about vessels of faith. Altars everywhere. Do you remember how this story of Naaman started? Do you remember? He was a commander, the chief commander. As we'd say, the head knocker in the army, right? Of the army of Aram. He was the king's most trusted warrior. The scriptures tell us that the Lord actually granted him victory, even though they were pagans. Well, God had a purpose for him. We know that. Naaman, however, suffered, as we saw in the passage of scripture, from some problems, didn't he? He had leprosy. Leprosy is no good then, it's no good now. It was considered to be a curse. In ancient Israel, you were unclean if you were leprous. And we, we saw the story, didn't we? What happened? He comes to Elijah. Elijah won't privilege him with a grand display of power, but he tells him simply go wash in the Jordan seven times. He does, he's healed. Now, if any of you are, have suffered from something like psoriasis, right, or eczema, you know it can be a long battle to get rid of that stuff if you ever have that, that, that happen in your life. Uh, just last night I saw three different commercials about products that you can take, pharmaceuticals that you can take to help that, right? Imagine what it would be like if you could go wash in the Fork of Deer River and be made clean. Naaman was ecstatic. He wanted to pay Elisha for this gift, which even modern science still cannot figure out. You know, God has no problems with things like that. Naaman's response is one of the greatest exclamations from a pagan person in all the Old Testament. After his healing, he says, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a present from your servant. He says, I've got to repay you. And he had brought, if you read the scripture, much gold, much silver, much clothing. Elisha says, no. The gift came from God, not from Elisha, didn't it? Elisha knew that. Well, Naaman then goes on after he proclaims faith and, and requests to pay him, and Elisha refuses, refuses to do so, to be paid. Naaman makes a second request. Well, if I can't pay you, can I have two mule loads of dirt? We talked about this last week, right? But, well, Naaman was going to take that dirt and create a holy place where he lived in a pagan land. You might remember what he said. He, he did ask one other thing of Elisha. He said, when I go to the house of Ryman, now, just to be clear for you people from Tennessee, this is not the Ryman Auditorium, okay? Different place. He said, I'll have to go with the king, and I'll have to bow down with him as he worships there, but please forgive me, because I know there's only one God now. It's the God of Israel. So he was going to take these two mule loads of dirt, and he was going to create an altar where he could worship who he knew to be the one and only true living God. His experience had testified to him there was a God. It wasn't Ryman, which is also Baal. It wasn't him. It was the God of Israel. But he was going to have to go back to a dark land. Now, I told you that he was a commander, right? A warrior who had been given great victories. It's not lost on us how brutal battle can be in our day, right? Neither was it lost on him. He would go and he would kill. He would wound and he would be wounded. He would go back to a dark land that was a place where not only did they worship one God, but maybe many gods that he knew were false now. He didn't want to forget what had been light for him. He didn't want to forget that one moment in time, as Whitney Houston would say if you grew up in the 80s, right? That one moment in time when he went down into the waters and was healed. Our experiences should do that. 
Our experiences with God should be for us a light we forever carry with us. We have those moments in our life. I guarantee you all of you do. They don't happen every day. They don't happen every time you ask for them, but they do happen. And when you get them, you better build an altar there to worship God because of them. Naaman was very wise. But building an altar is not something that you can hide. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. It was going to shine around him. And I, I grew up, I'm old enough to have grown up in an age where there were no cell phones. Everybody else know that, right? Grew up in a small town of Humboldt, you know, next door to us. There's about 10,000 people then, smaller now. We didn't need cell phones or Snapchat or Facebook to know what was going on, right? I guarantee you something happened in Humboldt on one end of the city, but within just a couple of hours, it made it through those AT&T phones that had cords that would stretch half a mile long through your house. It made it through Humboldt in a few minutes. It did, right? Telegraph, telephone, will tell somebody, correct? Well, you know the people that lived around Naaman, who was such a, a well-known figure, when they saw that he had an altar built at his home and it wasn't to their God, they would have had to ask a question, wouldn't they? What are you doing, Naaman? And Naaman would have had to share his story about what God had done. See, that's how it works. What God has done for us personally isn't for us personally. It's so that we can share about him to all the world and what he's done. There was an altar that what God was building through what he'd done through Naaman everywhere. You've got those moments where God has done something in your life. If you had the courage to share it, you would at times. You know what's happening around us in the world? The Christian faith is shrinking. Now, there are pockets where it's blazing, burning. Not in our nation. Our nation is in steep and steady decline in the faith. I wonder why that is. Why are we shrinking? I think part of it may be that you and I live in such a scientific mindset that if we say anything miraculous, we can say God worked in our life, we're afraid people are going to say, well, that was just coincidence, or hey, there's no evidence that you can show me. There's no miracle there. We believe we'd be categorized as unscientific. Do you know that science and miracles are not contradictory? Do you know that? It's very true. In science, they have words for miracles, but they don't call it a miracle. They call it an anomaly. We've got a doctor here with us. Much of what science does, if you have a need for a prescription, if you're exhibiting certain symptoms, you, you're placed on a curve, a, a statistical curve. And we believe that everybody responds in this way with a certain number of standard deviations. And so we believe most people can be treated by this way. But there are people that lie outside that curve who don't need to be. They get better or their treatment doesn't work. They're anomalies. In the scientific world, and I've seen many stories about this in my ministry, of radical things happening. And a scientist says, well, it's an anomaly. We don't know what happens. It goes to agnosticism for many of them. They're agnostic about it. What does it mean? We don't know. But as people of faith, we do know. We know there's a person who has a higher order than scientific order, and that's God. God does these things. We should never, ever shrink from telling the story of faith. Listen to me. If you're listening online, Christianity is not shrinking because we believe the miraculous. People aren't coming to the faith because we people who believe in the miraculous are afraid to speak about it. That's what's happening. By very definition, we believe the greatest miracle that ever happened. We believe the Son of God, who's always existed, became human. And that same person who was perfect and sinless died for our sins and is raised from the dead. I've done to a number of funerals recently. Been to several. Those people usually don't get up out of the casket. But we know one time, one person did, and he promises one day we will. Hey, whether you like it or not, we believe some outlandish stuff. 
our little miracle stories aren't going to hurt the world at all. They're only going to help it. Only going to help. When you and I know what our story is, when we share it with other people, guess what happens? Places of worship pop up everywhere. Altars don't just happen here. They happen in strange places. You ever had that happen to you? You ever had God encounter you somewhere you never expected it? I have. When I was in seminary, um, I had three churches in Bradford. As I've told you before, when, when you're really good, they give you a lot of churches, right? I had three churches in Bradford, the biggest of which had about 50 people. And if we ever made 50 people, like, you know, 50 was our high. If we ever got there, which we did seven, eight times a year, I had to wear overalls to church. I looked good in them. I weighed about 135 pounds then. I can't wear them anymore, okay? So don't ask. I know you'd really love for me to wear overalls. That was a joke with them, and I did it. I played along. During that time frame, I worked in the summers while I was seminary doing landscaping. I worked for my old uh, supervisor from Union. My, my story was I went to Union, graduated Jenny. My wife had two more years of school. So I worked at Union as, uh, on the grounds department for two years to help pay for her college, right? It was a good deal for us, really. So I worked in the grounds crew. And then when I went to seminary, the guy who uh, I had worked for, who some of people here know, his name's JC. I'll just leave his name at that. He also owned a landscaping business, so I began to work for him in the summers to make money to go to school on, right? It was a good deal for me. Well, one summer, probably along 2002, 2003, working together, and uh, we'd known each other six or seven years, then I'd worked for him a long time off and on. And, uh, well, it was June. You know what happens if you weed eat and trim shrubs and do stuff like that in June? You don't smell too good. Remember that mule that we talked about, the two dirt loads, the mule loads of dirt, right? You kind of smell like a mule. Y'all ever smelled a mule? They don't smell good. And uh, JC then, this was our executive office. It was a 1990 F-150 single cab Ford. Looked just like that, not the same one, but it looked exactly like that. I'm not advertising for Jones Chevrolet, by the way, or Ford, whatever that might be. But if you like that truck, I think it's in South Carolina, if you just want to know. You can look it up. We were driving along in East Jackson. Y'all know East Jackson? It can be kind of a sketchy place. This was actually a nice neighborhood. Uh, we were driving along, going from one yard to another, like doing lawn maintenance. And um, my friend JC uh, is an interesting fellow. He began to drink alcohol when he was in high school. And then he went on after high school to serve two tours in Vietnam. He's about 25 years older than me, 20 years older. I can't remember exactly. He did two tours in reconnaissance in Vietnam, so he was a real soldier. You know what I mean? He knew what it was like to, to, to be in real combat. He wasn't just deployed to Germany. He was deployed, boots on the ground, knows what it's like. He says by the time he got to Vietnam, he was already an alcoholic, more than likely. After he got back from Vietnam, he, he shuffled in and out of jobs until he was about 34 years old. Then he had a life-changing experience where he realized if he didn't get some help, he was going to have to stay in jail. And so he decided, reluctantly, I'm going to have to get some help, right? He said you can only eat warm bologna sandwiches and Kool-Aid for so long in life. That's what you get in jail. If anybody wants to go, I would recommend it, okay? Anyway, he's got a fascinating story. That summer day, we were mowing yards together, and as we're driving along from one yard to the other, he decides to, to tell his story, a part of his story, to a guy who's working with us. Now, I told you I'd worked for J.C. five or six years, seven years or so. So J.C.'s driving. He's got to drive everywhere he goes. Can you get a witness, to Bubba? He's he got to drive everywhere he goes. Bubba and I know him well. Well, so he's got to drive. Of course, I've been there six or seven years, so guess where I get to sit? By the window, Right? Because we had a new guy. Where do the new guys always get to sit? In the middle, right? So he, they're sitting in the middle because J.C. lives by the, the fact that if you're out in the heat, you can't, you can't turn the air conditioner on. It'll, it'll, it'll ruin you. When, he's not, when he was not working with me, I turned the air on. It never ruined me that I know of. But don't tell him, okay? Don't want him to know that publicly. 
The guy that was in between us was a guy who grew up very different from me, grew up in a situation that he would describe and did describe as being the ghetto. He'd been in and out of jail for drug use and drug abuse and other crimes related to that. He was in the beginning stages of recovery. His name was Brent. So we're driving along, J.C. driving, Brent in the middle, me in the passenger side, sucking in the cold air as much as you can find when you're going, uh, you know, 240. Two windows down, 40 miles an hour. For some reason that day, J.C. decided to share the story of one of the last times he drank. He lived in Memphis then. And, you know, we think tough guys, they can drink a lot, right? They can drink a lot of alcohol and won't bother them. Well, that's true for a little while. In addiction. In fact, you can drink more and more, and it does seems to bother you less and less. That's the hook in it. But the further you get in addiction, guess what happens? You can drink less and less and less and less. And JC began to tell the story that he was at his the beginning bar and his rounds of bars he usually went to at night, and he drank his first beer. And then he remembers nothing else that happened. One beer, blackout. Addiction. He wakes up the next morning having no idea how he got home. He knows his vehicle's there. He's there safe and sound. Remembers nothing of it, which is a horrifying experience for him. As I said, he likes to be in control, likes to drive. So he calls his friends. Did you help me get home? No. We saw you at so-and-so bar. Calls another friend. What's up? Well, you were here. You acted fine to us. So what he realizes is that all the many bars that he used to hop from every night, that he'd been to every one of them, driven the streets of Memphis safely, didn't have an accident. And made it home safe and sound. Miracle. And then J.C. said this one phrase, which I'll never forget, in that nasty, smelly truck. He said, that goes to show how big God is. Then something happened that I'll never forget. He pulled up put the truck in park, and a peace descended on the cab of that truck that I would say we felt, yes, but it was more than a feeling, it was a place. It was like for a moment, glory entered that cab of that Ford truck, and I've never, ever forgot it. I say, well, that could just be the way you feel. Well, J.C. took a picture of me because he knew something was going on. This is what I look like. <laughs> and truth is, when I leaned around Brent to look at J.C., because I realized something was going on, he looked exactly like that. Then I looked at Brent, who I have no idea if he was a Christian or not. J.C. is. I was a minister. I looked at him, and he looked at us, and he looked exactly like that. We didn't know what was going on, but we knew somebody had said, yeah, that God is me. J.C. shared a simple story of how God had watched over him, protected him, and loved him when he had no idea what that really meant. So on the side of a nameless neighborhood in Jackson, God had built an altar to worship and to praise Him. It can happen anywhere, can it? But it can't happen if you don't share your story with other people. I don't know how that changed Brent, but I know I've never forgotten it and will always remember God's altars happen everywhere. I think this morning as we celebrate communion, When we remember the words, and let me be safe here, get some sanitizer. You know Jesus used sanitizer, don't you? It was called his blood, right? As we celebrate communion, we remember the historic words that Jesus spoke as is recorded in Scripture. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for the many. Now, do you remember the other words? Do this as oft as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Do you think Jesus might have been saying, every time you gather with people of faith, there should be an opportunity for you to remember my altar. Every meal you share with everyone should be an opportunity to remember the story of my love for you. I believe that's what he meant. I believe that's what we're called to do. At this time, I'm going to call forward our worship team. They'll receive the elements. During the last song, I will celebrate with you. And as we begin the last song, we'll just all celebrate with our families and each of you in your pew, our communion here. There will be trash receptacles at each door, so as you exit, you can leave your trash there at the end. And you, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, Marley, the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. Will, the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. Kim, the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. Chanda, the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. Jeremiah, the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. Thank you. This morning, remember, as we celebrate together, the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. Remember always the invitation from Christ to receive His healing, His grace, and peace. As we celebrate together, if you'd like to come and pray at the altar, we can do that safely. Uh, please feel welcome to do that. If you're here and God's moving in your heart, whatever it may be, I won't pretend to know how God speaks to us, but I do know that He does. If He's speaking to you today, won't you come? Won't you come? As we, as we close this morning, we will sing Living Hope. Ah! 
good to know no matter what season we are facing we do have a living hope in Jesus Christ and that will never be taken away from us isn't that good to know it's awesome briefly uh, this today this afternoon at 2 p.m. we will have a zoom charge conference meeting I intended to send out the email in between services but i'll be doing that right after church today for all of our church leadership if you'd like to be a part of that zoom charge conference uh, please feel free to contact me if you have my cell phone number text me and i'll send you the link uh, via email to you you're welcome to join us for that also uh, this wednesday night our new confirmation class will have its first full class it'll be at the youth house at 6 p.m so be there about 45 minutes to an hour with our confirmands and look forward to that it's going to be a lot of fun also, on the 24th, which is next Saturday or Saturday week coming up for us, uh, we're going to be having um, our Fall Fest at Robert and Belinda Burns' house. This is for our church family. If you'd like to join us, there's going to be pony rides. Um, I, I just got a picture of Bubba at six foot eight riding a pony. I, I wonder what that looked like. Uh, <laughs> um, pony rides, hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, all that kind of good stuff. And I think they're going to do some face painting, all that stuff that kids will love. But it's for everybody. Bring your lawn chair, I believe, is, is a good, good encouragement. Bring your folding chair, whatever you might have. Your bag chairs, now that we have, bring those uh, so we can celebrate. And it's going to be an outdoor event, so we should be safe, and we'll try to be socially distant. Also, next uh, Sunday, uh, the 25th, just in case our youth have not confirmed their faith, we're taking them to zombie paintball, and after that, we'll have a number of rededications, okay? Okay. Um, right anyway it's a lot of fun my daughter's been just a paintball course really but it'll be fun so our youth are invited to come if our youth have friends right brett they can invite friends so if our youth have friends would like to bring them phil you're welcome to do that all right look forward to seeing you all this week come by and see me love to talk to you i pray you have a blessed week may the grace and mercy of the lord jesus anoint you and bless you May indeed, and the life that lies ahead, may you have the courage to share your story. God is working in your life, so let that work shine in the world around us.
Father, I pray your blessings that as this family of faith goes out into the world, they may know your health, your healing, and your peace and may return here to bring you honor and glory. Amen.